Hello everyone. I'm so glad you could join me. I have a special treat for you today. My name is Paula Smith and I am with MyMother'sChild.com. Seven years ago this week, I became a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And this project that I'm going to show you today is what started it all. This is a project that we're going to be doing. It's a darling little treat holder. It holds Hershey Nuggets and it can be customized for any occasion. The one we're gonna do is for Christmas, and we are going to use designer series paper from the um, Heartwarming Hugs uh, Suite. I have two stamp sets, Warm Hugs and Wrapped in Christmas, and dies that we will be using. We're gonna be using this stamp right here, which is an outline. And then we're gonna be using this one right here that says a little something for you. But I'll be showing you these in more detail, so let's go ahead and get started. I have already cut what we're gonna to need today. You will need a one and seven eighth by four and a quarter piece of real red cardstock. I'm gonna need a piece, a scrap of real red for something else. I'm gonna need a scrap of whisper white and then these are the little jackets that are going to go on the Hershey Kisses. This is from this set of designer series paper. These are cut at one inch by three. All of the directions and measurements uh, and everything that you'll need to know will be in a tutorial that'll be down below in the comments and in the description. So we're gonna get started. Let me show you this paper first. Our designer series paper, if you're not familiar with it, is double-sided and the way they're um, the way they're designed usually on one side is maybe holiday specific this one this one but when you turn it over they're usually more all occasion you could use this any time of the year same thing with this one red and right red and white stripe That'll go with anything. Red's my favorite color. This is a precious little gingham that would be great for the springtime and Easter. And then you have this one. This is a stripe. It is red and green, but it would, could go for anything. And then we have this. This might be a little more Christmassy, but polka dots are always a good choice. And there's one last page in the... Um, in the pack that I wanted to show you. This one has a great houndstooth check on the back. That would be very good for something masculine that you wanted to do. I don't know, for some reason, when I see houndstooth, I think of um, Sherlock Holmes, and that to me says masculine. Now, I realize if you're from Alabama, you know, houndstooth might say something different to you, but as an LSU fan, I'm not gonna talk about that. So, let's move on. The first thing we're gonna do, like I said, we're gonna cut this at one and seven eighth by four, four and a quarter, I think is what I said. It'll, uh, it'll be in there, four and a quarter. And then we are going to score it at a quarter inch. Our trimmers have two blades on them. The darker one is a cutting blade. The lighter one is a scoring blade. When I'm doing scoring, I try to remember to move my cutting blade out of the way so that I don't cut instead of score. Um, sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. But we're gonna score this at a quarter inch on both sides. And this is what will form our tray. So I'll score this. And I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. I'm gonna take my bone folder and I am going to fold on that score line on both sides. Now I'm gonna use my bone folder because I want a really crisp edge and I want this tray to have really good sides. Now, you have your tray made. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to take our nuggets. These, the ones that are in here were milk chocolate, so they're wrapped in silver. These have almonds in them, so they're, they're gold. You can now buy bags of the Hershey Nuggets that are um, like one of a kind, 
used to be when you bought a bag, it was all mixed, which meant I always ended up with the almond ones left over. But, so we have our wraps, our little jackets, and these are one by three, and I am going to use some tear and tape and put this, these are the sides that I want up. So I'm gonna turn them over and I am gonna put some tear and tape on them. You can use glue dots if you do. I just suggest you use more than one so that it sticks better. And tear and tape is just what it says. You can put it on here and then just tear it. You don't need scissors to cut it. I'm gonna go ahead and do them all. What I was saying earlier about this, we're doing it in Christmas paper and Christmas colors. But this would be so cute if you did it in fall colors and did this for everybody's place setting at your Thanksgiving table, which hopefully we'll be able to get together this year. Then at Christmas, you could do it, you know, in a Christmas. For Easter, you just do it in bright spring colors. It would be um, so cute for Valentine's Day if you have a, um, a little Valentine's get together for something, or if you wanna send something to your children's school. This is so good. Now you might not wanna send the ones with the nuts in them, but whatever your school permits. So now we're gonna take the, um, the backing off of the tear and tape. This tear and tape is very strong, so it will stay on there really well. Now here's the trick I wanna show you. Do you see how this nugget, the wrapping opens? I don't wanna open it, but it opens this way. So when we put this on, I want this to be towards the bottom. When you put it on this way and wrap it around, then it stays snug. If you put it on the other way, it has a, when you pull to wrap it around, it has a tendency to come open. What happened to my tear and tape? I must have took it off along with the backing. I'll put some more on here. Let's try this again. Don't you just love live video? You never know what's going to happen. I don't know how actors do live. TV all the time. They make me a nervous wreck. So we're gonna wrap this around. And now you have one made. And so we're gonna go ahead real quickly and do the others. These can be done very fast, especially if you get somebody to help you and just get a little assembly line going. I once for um, Valentine's Day, I uh, had a friend who always hosted a Valentine's Day luncheon for her friends, and so I made 50 of these for the luncheon. And um, it took a little while, but it wasn't, I mean, 50's a lot, so it didn't take as long as you might think it would. Why doesn't this want to stick? Okay, that's because I didn't do this first. No. There we go. This project is what started it all for me in Stampin' Up. I think I said that this is my seven year anniversary this week. And it started because I found this project on Pinterest and I just thought it was so cute. Now the paper was different and all, but the, whole, the project in general was the same. And I decided I had to do it. So uh, Pinterest gave me everything I needed. I went to the Stampin' Up website and placed an order, got everything I needed, and then something happened that Christmas, we got really busy, and I never got it made. But I had everything together. Well, during that following summer, I decided that I wanted to see what else was available from Stampin' Up. So I uh, found a demonstrator here in Baton Rouge and went to see her to get a catalog. And when I saw all the cute cards that she had made and all the other things and everything that was available, I took that catalog home and started making my list of what I wanted. And it's like, yeah, I'm not paying full price because I want everything. And that was when I signed my agreement and that was seven years ago and it has been so much fun. For probably the first three and a half years, I was what I would just call an enthusiast hobby demonstrator. 
I just bought it because I just signed up because I wanted the discount. I wasn't gonna pay full price. Then I started holding classes and watching other people get so excited after they had just told you, I'm not creative, I can't do this. Then I had this one lady, she made this card and she looked up at me and she had the best smile on her face and she said, look, I did it. That's why I do this because it is fun and people get to enjoy themselves and they are so pleased when they do something creative, when they think they're not. We have this made, we have our tray made. I'm gonna take another piece of Karen tape, put it down the middle, just to help these stay in place. Take this up. Now all you have to do is just put them in the tray, press them down. And there you go. Isn't that so cute? What I put these in is what's called a pretzel bag. Let me get the one out that I have here. I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this. Let me, here's the bag that they came in. I got these at a little party store. They're called pretzel bags. And these are um, one and, they're like two and a half wide. And they're, I think, probably 10 inches long. So if you wanted to do more than four, you have plenty of room to do that. If you can find them that are two inches wide, that would they would fit a little more snug, but I'll show you what I did to make these fit more snugly. So now you're gonna take your bag, and you're gonna take your little tray, and you're gonna slide your tray in there. And you can see you if you wanted to, I mean, you could put as many nuggets in here as you wanted. Now, just because I wanted it to fit really snugly, I'm gonna take some blue dots. Take, my, take your pick tool, take a glue dot, and I'll put one right here. I'll put one right here. And then I am going to pull this tightly and wrap it and attach it to those glue dots. So now this holds these very tightly. You don't have to do that. It's, it's just a thing with me. We're gonna cut some of this off, but I'm gonna put the ribbon around it first. The ribbon that we're going to use Go ahead and do the stamping and then I'll get the ribbon. This is the tag we're going to use. Now I have already stamped these, but I'm going to show you what I did. This, the real red scrap, doesn't have any stamping on it. We're going to cut that out with um, the circle die. And we're going to um, cut the other one out. This is the one that has the stamping. One of them is a photopolymer stamp, which is our clear stamp. The other one is a cling stamp, which is our red rubber. I'm gonna do the cling stamp first because these are see-through and so it's much easier to make sure things are lined up. So I'm gonna get out real red ink. I'm gonna stamp the sentiment, which says a little something for you. that there. Usually I will go ahead and stamp two while I'm stamping and it's out. I can always use another one on another project. 
and I just put the extra in the stamp case for when I need it. Now we're going to take Mossy Meadow and we're gonna put the decorative border around it. And you'll see now why I say we do the photopolymer last. Because it is a photopolymer stamp and it doesn't have any cushion, we use a paper piercing mat to give it some um, give, I guess is the best way to say it. So we're gonna do this. Now I'm gonna stand up a little bit because I wanna make sure I can get this right. And you can see, you can see through this stamp. So I can tell where it's gonna go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the other one. Oh, I may have stamped it too close. Yeah, it's a little close. I'm not gonna do that. I can always stamp it later. Now what we would do is we would take our dies, which are from the warm hugs, uh, warm wraps. We would take our scrap of red and we would cut out the circle. And then we would take our, I guess that's octagon, and we would line that up. And then we would run this through our cut and emboss machine, which by the way, the new one is so amazing. It cuts so well and so quiet and it's lighter and it's folds up so it makes it really easy to transport. But we're gonna cut these two out. And after they're cut, this is what you're gonna have. You're gonna have these pieces here. So I am, here's a little tip for you. I bought one of these at Joann's. It's just, a little, I think quilters use it or people who sew. But when I'm creating and I don't wanna lose my dies, I just put them in here. This is magnetic and then that way I know where they are. So we're gonna move this out of the way. We have those out, we have those cut. Put these over here. We'll clean those in a minute. Now I am going to, I'm going to use dimensionals on these, but what I'm gonna do first is I wanna be able to put ribbon through here. So I am going to, if you have a just a regular hole punch, you can use that too. I am going to use our detailed trio punch with this little oval right here to cut what I'm gonna put our ribbon through. And I'm gonna turn it over. And I'm gonna put this through here. Okay. Now that I have done that, I will put the dimensionals on because otherwise it would not have fit in there. My friends will all tell you I'm a little dimensional crazy. These are basically double-sided adhesive foam dots and they give you some lift on your project, especially when you're making cards. Sometimes that lift or the texture just makes all the difference in the world. Gives it some height. So we're going to take the backs off. We're going to, now I'm going to line those two ovals up because that's where Now, as I said, if you have just a regular hole punch, that'll work just fine. So now we have our tag ready. I have another great trick for you. I like to always make sure you, these little tricks and tips that I've picked up over the years from different demonstrators and some from my customers, uh, There's it makes things so much easier. So let me show you, okay, here's, these are, aren't these so cute? These little glitter stars. Now this one, they come with a little silver um, thread on them, but I want, I did not want the silver thread. So um, give me just one second. I'm gonna get my ribbon, which I had picked up after myself and forgot to get this back out. So, 
This is the ribbon, this is braided linen trim, and it is red, and it's also in this sweet, and I am going to cut about, um, probably about 12 inches. If you're better at making bows than I am, then you probably don't need as much. I always give myself a little extra just in case I have trouble. Now I'm gonna show you what happened yesterday. When I was trying to make this, I could not get this to go through. <laughs> now look at that. It goes through perfectly, right? Of course it does. I spent quite a few minutes trying to get that through yesterday. Then I remembered this trick. If you've worn braces before, you may recognize these. You can find them at a drugstore in the section where you can find wax and things for braces. And they're little threaders. So we're gonna take one of those little threaders. We are going to put the thread through the loop end of it. Then we're gonna take the pointy end of it and put it through the eyelet and pull. And now you have your thread in there. Isn't that cool? We had some one year that were teeny tiny little openings and this worked great. So just keep that in mind. You can find those in the drugstore. So what we're gonna do, first I'm gonna tie this around here once and tie a knot. And I'm gonna tie a knot. I'm gonna bring my tag and put it through here. And I pulled it out of my, don't know how I did that, but anyway, we'll just put it back in. You'll get to see the demonstration twice. So we're gonna put it through the loop, put it through the eyelet, and pull it through. Now I have my little star and I am going to tie a bow. My bow tying skills are still in development. If you have a trick that makes them come out good all the time, I'd love it if you would leave it in the comments. That's one of those cases where we help each other so I'm going to tie this in a bow. I don't want it quite that big, so I'm going to pull it down a little bit, trim off the edges, now I am not going to use my ribbon scissors to cut this bag. My mother was a sewer. If I had ever used her fabric scissors for something other than fabric, she would have had my head. So I'm just gonna trim this off with a pair of snips. And now you have your bag. Isn't that so cute? And you can see how simple it is and how easy it is to customize to anything that you wanna do. So be sure to check back probably tomorrow and I'll have the tutorial and all the measurements and directions for you. Thank you again for joining me. You can find me on Facebook. I'm also on YouTube and Instagram. And I do have a blog. Uh, the links for all of those will be in the description under this video. And please, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to be sure that you know when there's a new um, video uploaded, just click on the little bell and you can set the notifications to do that. Thank you and I hope you have a great day.